Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. As you can see, it's finally crocus time. Um, I'll get onto these in a minute, but I just wanted to apologise that we haven't done any videos recently. Uh, life's been a little bit tricky. We had a lot of stress at the start of the year and then I had an injury and loads of pain for a few months. And then after that, we had a virus, which we're only just starting to get over now. So now that we're feeling a little bit brighter, we're back outside and we've caught this beautiful sunshine today and the crocuses are all popping up. Um, so thanks for your patience. Hopefully that will be the end of our kind of back-to-back -back difficulties. And I'm really hoping that spring will be easier and hopefully our immune systems are a bit stronger too and we can just get back into the swing of things. Um, I thought I'd show you around a bit today. I'm not gonna do any heavy jobs just because I am still feeling a little bit poorly, but there's so many things around the garden now that are just really exciting. Um, the crocuses, I would say, not quite at their best, but almost getting there. So as you can see, this side, um, has flowered probably as much as it will. There's a few left to go, but not too many. Um, and this side hasn't flowered much at all yet, but if you look very closely, you can see there's so many um, leaves pushing up through the soil. And I think this side is gonna look really impressive when it flowers. So we'll be looking forward to that because they're packed so densely. And when you get a sunny day like this and the petals open, it really covers the grass. And right now I'm just watching a bee over there um, and it's so sweet. I really love this time of year. So these are our Pickwick crocuses. You might remember seeing them this time last year, which was about the time that we properly started doing YouTube. Um, this time we've got a better camera as well, so that's another really nice thing. Um, so hopefully the shots in this video will be a little bit nicer too. Um, but these are Pickwick and they're a Dutch variety of crocus. So they flower a little bit later than the smaller types of crocuses. So early March is the best time for these we find. Um, most of these are Pickwick, but there are a couple of varieties that I don't know how they got here. I don't know what they are, so if you recognise them, please do let me know the name. So there's this kind of dark purple one that's like a kind of Cadbury's chocolate purple, and there's this lilac one, which is absolutely the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And if I ever find out what this crocus is called, I want to pl plant way more of it because it's stunning. It's a really soft purple colour. Um, and what I love about the Pickwick crocuses is the detail on the leaves. It's so fine, it looks like it's been hand painted. Looking at the lilac ones, the way the sun shines through the petals, it's so nice. And this time of year is just so welcome after the kind of boring winter, dark, short days. Um, the days really feel like they're starting to get longer. So <laughs> um, I thought we would start here because this is the most excite exciting bit of the garden. I will show you again next week because I think this side will look amazing. But around me, we've got other bulbs that are popping up too. So we've got our tulips over there and these are a tulip that should be perennial. I've only grown them here for one year so far, but the leaves look like they're quite healthy and strong. So we should see some tulips here too. They're a Viridiflora tulip. I think they're called spring green, but I will have to check when they flower they're a white and green kind of flower and I underplanted those with a muscari which is called baby's breath and those are popping up too um, so that's really promising we've got tiny little primroses appearing everywhere I love primroses um, and a lot of them are naturalized in the lawn so if you watched our last video um, you might remember this bed um, I'm talking about turning it into a late winter early spring interest area um, and my main difficulty was how do we fill it with snowdrops in uh, a fast and cheap way so They've mostly gone over now um, and because I found that clump at the top of the garden and brought it down, I have managed to add about eight more patches. So I think these um, should, the bulbs should grow nice and strong now that the leaves are going to do their photosynthesis and feed them. Um, and then hopefully next year we'll see a bit more snowdrop action here. Um, but you can see that the ground is quite covered now. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this flower again. I almost want to skip the whole year and just see it because I love snowdrops and I am a little bit sad that they're going over now, but um, that should be good progress. And I'm glad we managed to find a patch in the garden because um, that meant we didn't need to buy any. I've also got a couple of new hellebores to show you. So I actually went on a hellebore tour with Ashwood Nurseries um, and it was amazing. It really was worth doing and I'd highly recommend it if you do live near there. Um, I picked up a couple of hellebores. So this one, um, they call it a neon variety or an anemone variety. Um, and it's because before it's been pollinated, these inner kind of petal things 
look a bit like an anemone flower. Um, but I was really drawn to this because I love the pink stems that look a bit like rhubarb. I thought that was really cool. I haven't seen many hellebores that have that. And also the colour of the flowers is amazing. I don't think I have any other yellow hellebores like this. And I was just really, really drawn to it. It's a beautiful, healthy plant. Um, I also got a tiny green hellebore because I don't have any green ones either um, and that one was a smaller variety um, this one was a little bit more expensive because of the size but I've put the small one in this bed as well so now that brings us up to one two three four five we've got seven hellebores in this bed so far and hopefully we'll keep developing that um, and this will just get better as the years go on but again it's one of those things it's about patience you have to enjoy what you've got now and um, try to forget about waiting otherwise it feels like it takes forever but hopefully next year this will look lovely um, now let's move up the garden and i'll show you the rest of our crocuses so here in the middle of the garden the crocuses that you can see below me are called joan of arc and again these are another dutch variety so they're really big um, they're plain white with a kind of um, bright yellowy centre and again it's really nice watching the bees in these ones. Um, the thing that I'm amazed with this year is how quickly these have multiplied. So I only put them in not last year but the one before so they flowered once before this and I felt at the time that they were quite scarce and patchy looking um, and I really felt like I wanted to have more clumps. Um, I didn't bother adding many more. I think I may have added a couple of bags but it wasn't a lot. And now they are absolutely everywhere. So I think they really like this area of the garden, which is nice. Um, I was having some reservations about them just because of their size. I thought they look a bit imposing, especially after the flowers have died back and the leaves are huge. And you really do see them with the lawn getting long and it looks a bit messy. Um, but I think this year I feel like it's worth it. And definitely when you see the bees in them, it feels more worthwhile. The only thing I'm not sure about is whether I'm gonna leave them as just white flowers or whether I should add some purple colors in here as well. I'd love to know what you think. Um, I feel like if I add some more colors in here, it might look softer because um, I find the white looks a little bit too stark for my liking. Um, we'll just see how we go. So these are kind of a stepping stone into that spring color. And I really like them this year. It's just so refreshing looking out the window and seeing flowers. Um, feels like it's been quite a long winter, to be honest. Um, so I'm really glad to have these. But this is um, really, really lovely. And on a sunny afternoon like today, it's just so nice sitting out here with a cup of tea and just taking in the crocuses, the sun and the bees. And it really, really helps me relax. Um, but we do have a few more crocuses behind me to show you now. So let's just move up closer towards the polytunnel. This bed is full of um, a crocus called Chrysanthus Ardschenk and similar to Joan of Arc, but smaller. And it has this yellow center, looks a bit like a fried egg. Um, I really love these ones, but I do think they're about to go over. So we've just caught them at the right time. Um, but I think one of my favorite things about growing crocuses is just before they do go over, they their petals become really loose and they're much more open um, and then they're much more noticeable in the garden and these just look lovely. Um, I think there are perhaps a few less of them this year and I would assume that's just because I've been weeding this bed quite heavily um, and perhaps accidentally dug out some of the bulbs um, because they're not something that you expect squirrels to eat much of really so it would probably be me <laughs> that's disrupted them and next up in this area we've also got loads of tulips popping up soon as well which you can see here most of these are tulips that i left in and i'm hoping will return um, and some of them were varieties that aren't supposed to perennialize but i really think you should just give it a go sometimes um, some people said they will come back other people said they won't i just want to try it and see what happens and i think sometimes you don't know until you try so i will let you know how i get on with those but um We've been really successful with getting tulips to return every year in other parts of the garden. So fingers crossed, because the ones in this bed I absolutely loved and I would love to see them again. But everything's waking up and it's really, really encouraging. So I'm gonna show you around the vegetable garden um, and show you uh, the signs of life that we've got there next. In our vegetable garden, things are all starting to wake up. And again, it just feels really encouraging. It's a nice time to look at what's to come in spring, but also think about how we're feeling kind of on top of those winter jobs, mostly. Um, I don't think I'll get everything done, but I feel like I've managed to get about 75% of the winter jobs done. Um, things are starting to recover from those really, really um, long frosts that we had. And I actually, I wondered if we'd lost a few of our plants, but um, things are 
still hanging on and coming back to life now. So you can see our perennial kale behind me. It's looking on the smaller side now. Um, I hacked away any of the dead and rotten things that didn't survive the frost. But there's enough there that it will come back and it will get big again. Um, and the same story with our perennial onions. Um, there's not too many of them, um, just because I think we ate too many of them last year, but I really want to build up a big stock of those. So maybe we'll hold off eating those um, this year. We'll see. Um, but the thing that I'm really looking forward to in this garden at the moment is the daffodils. So on either side of us here, we've got these beds that are completely full of daffodils. And then we've also got two um, troughs, which are full of daffodils as well. Um, the ones on either side of me, um, I think they have three or four varieties in. So there's pheasant's eye, cheerfulness, ice follies, and another one that I can't remember, um, but I can see it's just starting to flower now. Um, so I'll show you again in a week and then if anyone knows what that is you might be able to remind me. But um, it's such a nice time of year when you, you feel like you can see all of these signs of spring coming but things haven't got too chaotic and you don't need to worry too much about weeding and keeping things in check. Um, it's just full of hope and little signs of um, nice flowers about. So. Um, that's really lovely and the two troughs behind me those are full of ice follies daffodils um, and last year they flowered at different times because I was late planting one of the troughs so this year it looks like they're going to flower um, in synchronization so that will be a nice bit of symmetry in this garden um, it's just something that you feel like you're never fully on top of it but it does get a little bit better each year and it's really nice to reflect on the progress that you've made um, and see these rewards as they get better and I did do loads of weeding in this area um, a couple of weeks ago because this bed with the daffodils in was completely overgrown. And this is an area where I really struggle to keep on top of things. I only have so much time and it's quite a big garden for one person to manage. So what we find is as you move up the garden, it does tend to get a bit messier as you get further away from the house, but I'm doing my best and I'm feeling really pleased to be more on top of this area now. So in the orchard, again, similar story. We've got loads of daffodils that are about to flower, a few that are flowering. Um, and some mystery crocuses. Again, I do not remember planting crocuses up here. Um, and they're a dark purple variety, which I don't think I've ever bought before. So if you know what this variety is, do let us know. Um, I think it's quite lovely, so it will definitely stay. And again, it's just something for the bees to enjoy um, earlier in the year. But it does amaze me how you find things that you just have no idea how they got there. Um, but they're very lovely. Um, and then the daffodils that you can see popping up, most of these are ice follies. The ones that are currently flowering, um, they should be a variety called February Gold. Um, I'm not sure if they are because they never really flower in February. Um, so we're in early March at the moment and they've just started flowering. Um, I'm not really a fan of the colour um, because they're quite yellow and plain and the varieties that I'm growing elsewhere are sort of uh, more muted, like a soft yellow or a white, or they've got some kind of amazing detail about them. And these are quite plain. Um, and the reason I planted them was because I thought they would flower January, February sort of time and be a really early variety, but they aren't. <laughs> so I may pull those up, um, but we'll see how we go. Um, and the thing about daffodils is unless they're the native variety, they don't really have a big benefit to pollinators either. So if we don't like them, there's not really any point in keeping them. So those ones might come out if I get the time. Um, I've also been pruning our apple trees and I decided that I was going to try and tackle the mistletoe because a couple of the trees were absolutely swamped in mistletoe. Um, so I've hacked away maybe a little bit more than I should have done um, trying to get it off in one go. We'll just see whether it comes back. I know sometimes it does um, but I just wanted to get on top of it and kind of feel like this area was a bit more tidy. Um, so we have still got one and a half trees left to prune. Um, whether or not I'll do them, I don't know, because it's just getting later and later. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world if I don't do them this year and I'll catch up with it again next year. Um, the ones that I have pruned, I did quite hard, even though you're supposed to not, not take too much off them. Um, I did reshape them quite a lot and take the tops off, especially because when we're harvesting the apples, we have no way of getting to the tops of the trees. So I really wanted to bring the height down a little bit. But I think that's more or less everything. Um, soon we'll be sowing seeds as well, so I'll try and share that with you in an upcoming video. I've done a little bit, but I am trying so hard to not get ahead of myself because you just end up making so much work if you sow them um, earlier than you need to. But we're really lucky here because our last frost date is early. It's about 
15th to the 22nd of March, so two or three weeks time, and we should be able to have things out in the polytunnel and the greenhouse. Um, so who knows, maybe I'll give it a week and then start doing my tomatoes. I just really don't want to rush it. Um, but let me know if you've started yours and how that's going and hope you enjoyed having a look around today. And if you want to see more of our cottage garden develop, be sure to give us a subscribe.